Alright. In the top left side, there is a blue Protoss player fighting for the Dragon Phoenix Gamers. It is a hero. In the top right side, the Red Zerg fighting for Onside Gaming. It is Solar. I don't know what happened with the other streams. They asked why only one observer, and I said, I'm just that good of an observer, you only need one. And then they started with... <laughs> <laughs> I, this happens sometimes with me and Koreans. It's it's hard to, you know... L sarcasm is, is difficult to do in text already, but then add, you know... A, a bit of a translation difficulty there as well on top of it, and, uh, you know, I get myself into trouble sometimes. I don't know. I, I hope this is all okay. <laughs> I really do. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's not too bad. They can still see it on the mainstream here, restream it, uh, I suppose, and then... Well, I know there is a few minute delay. That would make it a bit more difficult, but the next game, it will be there as well. And it's covered here, so... Right, right, it's not like we're missing matches. Wonderful, anyway. Anyway, looking forward to what, seeing these two do their dirty work in the game of StarCraft 2. And, well... I haven't seen Solar, actually, in a little bit. For a period of time, I, I thought that Solar would just become one of the absolute, undebatable best Zergs of Korea. And, well... It depends on how long of a list you want to make of the absolute best Zergs in Korea, right? But, you know, maybe just just on championships, victories overall, it's, it's a difficult one, right? I don't think you can really, really say that about him, but I don't know. I don't know why that is. Is it inconsistency? I don't think it's that either, because he is pretty consistent, right? He is making the GSL every time. He's sitting there. Sometimes he gets a bit deeper than other times, but he's always there. But for some reason, I still just never quite expect him to win, and it could be because of his previous results. Just solely that? I don't know. Hmm. Right, Stargate coming up. Taps not finding anything there. <laughs> it's nice to see actually Solar that confident in like, oh no, you are a good dobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fun. Alright. Oracle here, not gonna be able to get too, too much, a single creep too, but you know, it's something, it's something, but I guess it's energy for energy, right? And there is another bit of energy. It's great, it's good, okay, nice. Nice, that's good to hear, that's a relief. Structure wise, another Stargate. Yeah, I saw that Inu also went offline. I'm not quite sure what happened to him. Into the clan. Into the clan TV. Anyway, we should be good. We should be good. Stargates making a couple of Phoenix now. As well, three Oracles have been loaded up onto the board. A couple of Queens waiting for their arrival. The creep carpet has been rolled out, so they're ready to receive. Oh, ah, not a lot happening there, is there? It's like maybe we can get something here, maybe something here. No, 
No, and let's go back again. The queens are there again as well. Yeah, it's just nothing. It's just nothing. Circlings, they're gonna get something, are they? No, nothing. Oh, <laughs> well, the adept stayed in place though. I like that. Because the oracles were in position to intercept if the circlings did still come back. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Only thing standing in the way for success for Solar was a, is a Maru nuke, yeah. <laughs> That's for a lot of people, isn't it? It's a fascinating subject though, right? Overall. Anyway. Um, hmm... Oh, that's a big swarm of flying units. Oh my goodness. Goodness gracious. Everything just up in the air. And, you know, the Queens might, <laughs> might be under the impression that it's some sort of a corporate uh, surprise party that well, got organized there. Uh, a balloon ride. But no, that was the Probos. Coming in and killing some of them. Well, only one of them. Overworld's also going down, and I mean, this damage is starting to add up, isn't it? That's already 600 extra uh, something minerals lost. Then I look at the work account overall, and it's it looks healthy. It's not much else to say. Spire is coming up, the base count for Solar is good. It's taking a lot of damage from these Phoenix, but it's... Okay, there we go. That's some drum kills. Look at that. 1,200 something there. Uh, already in the mineral difference there. Eesh. And I'm holding my breath as these Phoenix are just floating around still. You do need to do more damage of your little 12 workers. This is starting to really add up. This, yeah, actually, that is, this is starting to add up quite considerably. This is becoming ridiculous now. <laughs> you know what? Looking at the numbers. Wait, how did he get back up to 80 workers all of a sudden? I'm crazy. Maybe I'd missed Lips. I thought he was down to 40 or something. Is there a graph we can see <laughs> about, like, the amount of workers he had? I know there's an army graph somewhere, but uh, oh well. Plus two attack for both these players coming up as well. Hero's got enough Phoenix to start lifting up Zerglings. That is the that's the place where we're at right now. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> hallucinating more phoenix because well, he just doesn't have enough yet he would like to give the impression that he has even more phoenix <laughs> oh it's for scouting of course Ooh, a little stasis here or there catching a bit more than uh, solo would have liked to and those queens now impossible for them to head over to that corner there's another stasis going down and successfully capturing more drones. Not too shabby. Keeping that mineral ticking rate pretty similar for both players. So we're back up in supply again. Quite a considerable amount. of that is in just pure zerkings for the time being, however. And he's deciding to... Uh, Stalk is deciding to try and... Uh, try their hand and a couple of queens there as well. Big battle with the vials coming in as the Phoenix have to evacuate the area. There's too many corruptors, but is this not too many stalkers for the time being? Uh, it's tough to call. Zergling's doing a great job. The Bainix as well. Just a threat that is coming towards those Starkers. Corruptus not quite ready yet with this battle in the Phoenix. We'll continue pursuing. 
Well, now only pushed backwards with another round of Stalkers swapped in. And the Stalkers aren't doing that fantastic against the, the Zergling numbers being produced, right? And then we still got Immortals coming up as well. The Charge Upgrade, that's going to be a bit, be uh, bit better in this place. So then, you know, Hero is going to feel pretty comfortable just swapping in a lot of Zealots here. But it's not difficult for for Solar to then just be like, alright, well, you start making Zealots, now we make these Zerglings into Banelings, right? He's already adding a considerable amount of Banelings here to this overall group. And in fact, it might already be enough to just start coming in here and saying goodnight to this base. More units. Oh, those three Archons. Those three Archons would have been massive right here in the front. But it's just, it just wasn't meant to be this base. He's going to go down the fourth base, to be fair, for Hero. As Hero tries to do some damage of his own on the other side with a run by of Zealots. It started chasing a queen, and it seems like Solar manages to minimize damage there quite well. Not losing drones, just a queen. I, th I think he still has enough queens. Yeah, he's still on eight queens here. That's more than enough. Great Aspire coming up. Adrenal Glance as well. The Hive Attack upgrades for Solar starting to take effect on this map pretty soon. If Hero can prevent that from happening, this would be the time. So army supply not looking tremendous in comparison to that of Solar. There's still some room to grow there for Hero for sure. This army is looking okay to deal with this, right? The Archons here in particular is what's catching my eye. Let's see whether or not they are going to be able to keep those Banings and Zerglings at bay. And then the Starkers will be able to mop up the rest. That's kind of the idea here. Let's see how good those splits are. Nice break blink away. That's the fantastic thing about those Archons, right? As long as you have them in front of the Stalkers, the Zerglings and Banelings, they don't want to engage them. They're going to try to run past them, but then running past them just allows those Archons to dish out so much damage. Right? It's very difficult to then say, like, well, just go around the Archon and go on the backside of those Stalkers, because the Stalkers, they can teleport. They can literally teleport, so... It's just, it's just a difficult army composition right now to attack what Solar has to engage as efficiently as you would like to. And then you're just kind of stuck holding that ball in your hand and, well, Hero making good use of it. He is going to lose another base here on the other side. The Corruptors do manage to take that down. But the Protoss army here does not seem to be something that's going to get answered pretty soon by the Zerg. The Ravagers, there we are. Blunt and top of... Hero takes game number one, as we will see GG momentarily here. Now we are. Alright, game number one going into Hero's favor. No fisticuffs today here for these two. Drone preventing direct conflict with the probe for the time being. He knows how to curl up in a neat little ball on the ground and defend himself. That's how you get strong, guys. The, this, this is true. This is why you, what your parents have been telling you. They want you to transform into a hatchery and just, you know, pat yourself up with some more HP, some, some hard skin, some thick skin. There you go. Take some time, right? Definitely take some time. You'll be in your hatchery cocoon for a little bit, but then afterwards, there you are. Strong, proud. Standing tall. Pulsating at a regular pace. <laughs> that way the bullies can't get to you anymore. <laughs> They'll be terrified. <laughs> right. Not everyone's career path, but hey, some people's got to do it, right? <laughs> mm. 
Twilight Council for Mr. Hero. Alrighty, day all right. Wondering if we're gonna get Adept Glaives here. I don't know why I'm suddenly feeling Adept Glaive. I guess it is because of the hatchery block, right? We didn't see him. <clears throat> we didn't see him do the hatchery block the previous game. Suddenly this round, bam, hatchery block. It used to be, it used to be so obvious, right, or so common for the Adept Glaive attack that as soon as, oh my god, there it is. As soon as you see the Korean Brodals block the hatchery or go for that block, you already know. They're prepping the attack for the Adept Glaive. They want as much distance as possible between one place and the other. So those Adept Shades, they manage to get as much distance as possible and really, really make that defense as difficult as it can be for the Zerg. Now, Solar, on the other hand, um, I have to say as well, it's not meant to be rude, but for some reason, Solar seems to be one of these Zergs that whenever I cast him, he seems to struggle with the Adept Glaives. He over defends, he under defends, he has a perfect defense, and yet still it all falls apart. This time around, he's gonna go try and be aggressive before anything else can hit him with these Zergs. And, well, that very well could work. That very well could work as the Zerglings are now spinning through. This is the best, one of the best things you can do against the Death Glaives. If you ever know that your opponent is going to try to do some sort of a timing attack like that, preemptively, just make a bunch of Zerglings. That's right. You don't have to be good at holding against them. You don't have to be good at knowing exactly when to stop producing your drones. Or you do. <laughs> as soon as you know it's coming... You just make units and you go across the map before they get a chance to warp anything in. Right, because the whole gateway is just then about finishing up and that is 17 probes in the ground. Solar looking phenomenal now to take this map. 44 workers, right? Versus 15, all right? We got 29 supply versus 60. I don't care what I said about, you know, Solar struggling against the Dead Blaves. He should have this in the back. Like, no matter what, right? He should. He definitely should. So please don't fail me now, Solar. Please. There we go. GG. Alright. Okay. Sweat off the forehead. Let's wipe that off and we got ourselves a show here. Did not die to the uh, due to the the depths push. Just gonna keep him alive, kicking. And a one to one is just always like it's. I know it's just one map score difference, but like the difference between a two to zero in a best of five and a one to one in a best of five, it feels like a difference of a tenfold, doesn't it? Because a reverse sweep in a best of five, you have to win three games in a row, and that is just, oh. It feels like it's going to be such a struggle. One to one, and it's, you know, it's anyone's game. Anyone's game. It goes from three wins to anyone's game. I'm sure, like, people tell me the math checks out, goes, and the math checks out, and I'm like, no, no, my feelings are telling me it shouldn't. <laughs> but hey. There we go. Hatchery for Solar again, pretty far away. We haven't seen Hero manage to really hit with the Adept Glaive just quite yet. Is he going to try to do it here again? And if so, are we going to see another one of those circling, flushing waves of death and destruction just across the map. If Solar managed to get his wall up and running again, right? Re-establish that wall behind his original wall. Maybe this game would be with him on match points. But instead, well, here we are. It's 
Third base for Solo gonna be taken and uh, Hero will be looking for the Stargate attack. Keep our eyes on the Adapt that is starting to make its way towards the drone line. Where are the Queens and the Zerklings? On his toes, left, right, juke, jive, uh, zigzag, weave, and wove. <laughs> Couldn't quite make anything stick there. Now, the Zirkling, I don't know. Did that probe just pull the Zirkling away from seeing the Oracle? Is that just what happens? Well, he sees it now. Spore Crawler immediately in production. There's two queens here already in a good position as well to force that oracle out of uh, out of the trajectory it was trying to take. Two more queens in the main base also and the, well, natural base, no drones there, so can't make anything stick there either. Zirkling gets a good scout. A lot of the information was already up for grabs with that uh, oracle across the map, of course. I get, you see that there's even more oracles coming in, right? So you feel a lot more validated with your choice of getting more sport crawlers out on the map here. Losing four drones with a almost suicidal run of those oracles there. Keeping most of the stuff alive. Three oracles. Couple of Zerglings. Nothing really happening there. I think the Oracles would still be the best shot here to really put a dent in anyone's play. Either by losing them or by killing a, you know, a fair amount of workers. Up until the moment where we have a Baneling Nest. I don't really see the same volatility here available for Solar. Ooh, the Adepts, in fact, the ones being able to take out... What in the... What is this? 11 kills on that Adept. Make that 12. And now six more drones go down for Solar all of a sudden. Not even due to the Oracles. My, oh my. Skittering across. It's barely the vision here. Those Zerglings moving about. As they're trying to figure out what the Protoss is exactly up to. And whether or not he's missed a, uh, a step or two in, in the chain here for Hero. Up the sides against that fight. Probably the best choice. A lot more workers on that production tab of Solar. Realizes he has to make up for the fact that he's lost quite a couple of them, and, well, the, the fact that he's gonna lose a couple more. Eight more workers, just like that. A grand total of 18 workers on the six-minute mark already eliminated, assassinated by the Adepts as well as the Oracles here. Solar once again struggling with the earlier game defense overall. He is trying to just mass up on drones as much as possible. Which always felt so weird to me because like it, it seems like he's making all the same steps. Sometimes he just takes a little bit more damage than other Zergs would in, in those remarks. But maybe maybe that's just me making that up, right? Or just somehow my brain telling me that this is happening even though it's not happening. Would like to see the statistics on it though. That would interest me. That's the great thing about being wrong, guys. If you know, if you're aware of your potential for being wrong, right? It feels a lot less bad if you are wrong. Just a, just a little Kozan wisdom there. It's 
not bad to be wrong either. Sometimes it's great. Unless if you're playing StarCraft and it's abysmal. It's the worst thing imaginable. <laughs> <laughs> right. Couple of zerglings. Looking for trouble. Hoping to provoke some protos there on the other side and see some less optimal positioning. Like this. He's ready. He's waiting. Careful. Oh, those queens. Up for grabs. That blink was quite aggressive, though, however, as the circling still relatively close. Another blink coming up. Stays his trap somehow. Managing to stop some of those circlings from approaching. That was a lot of stalkers. Thought the queens there were gonna be the big pool, but instead, those stalkers going down. That was that was maybe a bit more than uh, than Hero wanted to have happen there. He's moving forwards with these stalkers as the Zerglings are about to break free. Okay, he does blink away from them before that happens, but now again he doesn't have a blink as the Zerglings run forwards, grab another stalker. Okay, I think that's all that he's going to be able to get though. He's behind in the, behind the gas clouds or the light clouds. I don't even know what those are. And things that make you invisible, at least. The block of vision. Now the staff is blinking back further. The Banglings doing an okay job so far. Managing to take out 13 probes as well. In the meanwhile, I think that was over here with another Bangling run by. Uh, as this was happening. Bringing our resources loss tab up and once more. We can see a clear advantage here for Hero. However, with the income advantage right now, starting to turn a little bit into Solar's favor. It makes me wonder. Heroes still ahead on overall supply, however. Those Banelings going into probes, they are not coming in for free. The Zealots, oh man. Do you just want to start fighting with them? I guess you don't. Tries to run away. Tries to take the Eye of Solar back to another location here. Solar laughed a lot of Banelings, ready to wait for those Zealots though. Because he's not going to fight the Zealots with his drones alone. So yeah, Hero has to try and find a way to spread out these Zealots a little bit. Have them go in one by one onto those, uh, onto those Banelings. Still takes a lot of Banelings, right, to kill, relatively, to kill one Zealot. Things like three or four. So if you manage to trade as efficiently as you can with Zealots versus Banelings, you're just going to absolutely crush the Zerg, right? But of course that is just not possible because we're human beings and... The way we control video games is through our artifices just moving about, jabbering and, and finicky movements on top of all sorts of stuff. I don't know where I'm going with this. Look at this, guys. Solar's going down into Pain Truck Town. The Protoss providing the lasers here, giving everyone sunburn as the Zerg will, well have to I guess kind of give in yeah there we go GG is called another game going into hero's favor as he steps up to the plate and gets himself to the match point first and foremost so Stargate Zack does get dropped down here for hero as well have to look at the probe that no, no okay so Kings go back afraid of any adept moving across as well coming to save that probe coming in for Hero here as the first real unit. The first real unit. Adapts and gateway unit. We can't really call real units, can we? You know, with the way they're created as well in such a short period of time, like that cannot be quality workmanship, right? 
it can it just I I have a hard time imagining that supposedly the most technologically advanced and they managed to get built the quickest wow <laughs> that's not how our technology works so I don't believe it at least our technology quite yet although it's not entirely true in all fields but anyway enough of that enough of that mumbo jumbo back into the oracles We've not had anything die until that moment right there, where Zirkling does fall. Um, but yeah, Solar, clearly, like, this is this is not something that's going to do anything. Vive, six Zirklings, it's a scouting tool. You, you keep tapping your opponents, and you're aware if he suddenly made six gateways and uh, comes at you with a bunch of charge lots, right? Uh, you're aware if he's making a bunch of void rays and, well, nothing on the ground at all, and... It's, it's a good thing to be aware of those things. It's good. <laughs> it's good, you know. It's good. They're very good, say, even. Alright. All gateways. Charge. Uh-huh. To start leading into something here. Might be him trying to get a bit of a push onto a fourth base, perhaps? With charge lots and plus one. Wait, there we go. That's the unit tab. Only one sentry. To be fair, I think the sentry addition into like a fourth base push with uh would be more would be more called for if you go for the Watchmakers, the uh, Blink Stalker, right? Zealots and Force Fields are very double-edged swords. It, it, it can absolutely ruin your day as well, as much as it can make your day. But then, like, it, it sometimes it even makes your day, and then straight afterwards, it just absolutely ruined because of it. <laughs> uh. A lot of factors involved. Oracle still just kind of scooting around. One of them goes down quite quickly. So we still only on 61 workers there, actually. He's lost... I guess he just lost six of them. It's not that... It's not that insane, right? I think Solo just being a little bit more careful with his, uh, with his droning this time around. The last time he perhaps kind of died because of his overdroning. Or maybe it's not droning enough before that period. It's a weird game, isn't it? It's a fun one. <laughs> fun. A fun, weird game. Alright. A lot of roaches on that production tab with a spire coming up as well. Robotics Bay has been completed just now, so Disruptors will be on that production tab visibly as also. You're gonna spot Disruptors coming up there. As I think, I mean, Heroes is probably gonna move backwards here, right? No? I think he will. Especially with these. Ah, uh, he's got Oracles. Two Oracles? They, they should be enough, right? Against this amount of Zerglings. Even with that Nexus still being quite early in the production, it's, it should be perfectly fine. Yeah, Solo doesn't even really go for it. Hang on. No, wait, hold on. Hold that thought. Comes back around, he's like, ooh, Oracles are gone. All right, let's give it a bash. But the rest of the army is there now as well as the Oracles, so... <clears throat> they didn't go far. That has two Archons. For a moment I thought that potentially could be Disruptors as well, of course. Finds his way onto the aggressive Zirklings and Roaches on his uh, third base. The fourth base now suddenly under a lot of pressure with the Mutalisk as well. Zirklings coming forth, but the Warping, Reinforcements, everything together. Once again, enough to push Solar back. Solar 101 Army Supply. 
Only 76 workers. But I think we'll see a car just a couple more workers, Solar. Just a couple more. There we go, there's one. He does have his fifth base coming up also, right? And that, I think, should be a really good thing for him. Ooh, that stasis, though. That definitely helps out Zero as... Oh, boy. This is tough. This is th those, <laughs> those do not work on flying units, Zero. <laughs> Except drones. But they kind of hover. And probes. And SCVs. And Reapers. And disruptors. Archons. Sentries. It's a lot of stuff that hovers in this game, isn't there? This could be the end here. With the Phoenix on the board already, it's very difficult for these mutilists to just deal with his army. I mean, even without his Phoenix, right? Those Stalkers with the Archons. Oof. Ah, it's a rough fight to take. Hero moving forwards. 87 army supply strong. It doesn't seem like that much. But the entirety of the army of the Solar is busy doing a counterattack. It's going to start taking out a Nexus here. It's going to start taking... Well, actually, it's not going to take anything out there. The Mutalists are going to Zerklings. These guys need to stick together right now. And they need to start shutting absolutely everything down. Hero. I think he's going to go for a recall here pretty soon. Looks like he's starting to gather up some units. Yeah. Oh, doesn't get the arc on that. That's a big thing as well. But the Mutalisks are deterred enough with just the Stalkers arriving in that location. I think these Archons now across the map might still be quite a... No, not like this. I thought for a moment it might be good, right? Just having these Archons still across the map because now the Mutalisks come back and... You might be able to keep things going for a little bit longer, but... Uh, not entirely. Not entirely at all. Circling, slowly working their way through the gateways. The production of heroes seemingly fully shut down. As Hero, on a path of war of his own, trying to get everything to go his way. Unfortunately, Solar's unit's always just that little bit more mobile and that quicker with getting on top of the worker line here. Definitely a tough thing to solve it for Hero. It feels like as his supply, it's all army supply now. Not a single worker alive still. Although he does have 715 minerals remaining. We've got to be watchful for how he spends it, right? Every single mineral right now could be an, a detrimental one. Solar, however, he found the Stalkers with his Mutalisk, with its Zerglings, and without those Archons anywhere present nor the Zealots, so Solar will be able to pick off an enormous portion of those Stalkers, and there we go, GG! We're going into game number five. It's been a rocky road for both of these players so far. Solar had to go up against Time, he had to go up against Ragnarok. He had to go up against... what was it? Showtime? Oh, no, Dark. He lost against Dark that time. He had to go through Cure, and he had to go up against Zhitong Bao as well. Now, his opponents, Hero, had to go through Showtime, had to go through Classic, he had to go through Cure. Who else? He had to go up against Bion, Bion knocking him down into the loser bracket. He had to go up against Nightmare. Now it's his run. So out of that entire run, only losing the one match to Bjorn. And that allows you to be here in the loser bracket qualification round. The one ever so wanted spot for these players. And it is tough. I do very much appreciate, however, that they, you know, the tournament organizers here, helping us out a little bit with the, uh, sm um, smalling? No, no, wait, how do, how do, how do I, the shrinking of the loser bracket, right? Or the lower bracket. 
I, th I think people call it the lower bracket now. More politically correct. Um, whenever I say loser or lower bracket, though, I, I mean, emotionally for me, charged, it's the exact same thing, right? But, well, I, I, I just assume you guys understand that. And assumptions make an ass out of you and me. And not you in this case, I guess. Ooh, that's... Is that... That's a quick bailing nest. That's a lot of zerglings being made, man. He's going for it, isn't he? He's just gonna do it. He's decided. He's gonna pull the trigger. He's just gonna try to make it happen right here, right now, with a bunch of zerglings. And a bunch of bailings. So far... Hero has only been on his side of the map. He's not seen a single thing across the map yet. He's none the wiser. He has not got a clue what is coming his way. He's still busy trying to kill this overlord right here. He's like, oh, well, let me just, let me just, you know, get these small statistical benefits for later down the line. But, well, my man, you got bigger f fish to fry pretty soon. Luckily for him, he does keep this oracle in his base. That's a big deal. The third base going down. That's a lot of minerals now being spent on something that's not shield batteries or gateways or anything else that can defend this wall. All right, we'll need to see a cancel probably on that nexus, but the Zerglings are already in. That pylon looking ever so juicy. The Oracle's definitely helping out a ton here against those Banelings. Trying to keep the gas or the, the way open into this base. The hero doing a good job with it so far. That pylon still standing. The Zerglings are not going to be enough. As it looks like, the man that was completely unprepared was prepared enough. Hero holds a heroic victory for him right there with just the oracles. Putting on their lasers, just flicking one switch and bam, that's all he needed. Hero, what a play, what a play you need.